those two great rivalry but great respect for one another as well obviously so many years on the sideline for Anson one of the best to ever do it in his 44th season 22 national championships in that Tar Heel blue Michelle Cooper getting ready. Such an incredible player, as Robbie Church knows well. His 22nd season in charge of the women's program at Duke. 37th overall in terms of coaching both men and women throughout his career. And we are ready to go from Koskinen Stadium. Everybody get back. And now we'll go. Duke in white. North Carolina, Tar Heel blue. And the Tar Heel goalkeeper, Emmy Allen, picks it up. We'll try to restart things in the back. Tori Hansen, one of the captains for this Tar Heel squad, number 22 in the back line. Her role becoming ever more important as the lone center back standing from the original pairing for the Tar Heels at the beginning of the season. First, Macy Bell, the All-American defender, was hurt. She's out for the season. And then her replacement, Kaylee Her, a freshman, also got injured. So. As you talked about, looking at the lineup, there has been a lot of shuffling. And can Michelle Cooper and this Duke Blue Devil attack take advantage of that tonight? We'll see. Yeah, and that's going to be the key, I think, early on for, for Duke, especially with Mich Michelle Cooper just recognizing that they have had to shift some players around. Can they take advantage by playing a bit more direct in these opening minutes? Alleviate some pressure and get Michelle Cooper facing that back line and running at him. Emily Colton collects it nicely and then tries to move it around to the other side. You mentioned Cox, number 13, getting into the starting lineup. Her third start of the season, number 13 in light blue. There are 37 players on this Tar Heel roster, 29 who have played already this season. There is incredible depth, and especially in those attacking groups. So we'll see a lot of different personalities and a unique mix of talent depending on who exactly Anson Dorrance chooses to put out there together. Defense does a nice job taking the ball away. Crowd urging the attack forward for the Blue Devils. Nice move by Mackenzie Pluck, the veteran grad student now for Duke, decided to come back this year. In that last play, Jen, with Pluck getting into advanced positions. A little combination play with Michelle Cooper had pulled out wide. That will be the big question mark in this game tonight. When Michelle Cooper isn't in more advanced positions, higher up the field, how do they break down the defense for North Carolina? Because there's a good picture of showing how quickly North Carolina gets back in transition defensively to get numbers behind the ball. So at times, Duke's going to have to be patient, continue to work the ball around. Five goals, three assists on the season for Michelle Cooper, who in 23 games she's played in her career at Duke, has a goal or an assist in 19 of them. That's production. <laughs> and that includes every match she's appeared in thus far this season, including a goal in each of the last four. Avery Patterson, leading scorer for the Tar Heels, knocked off the ball. Sophie Jones, one of the captains for the Blue Devils, so important in the midfield, number seven. Ball not a down, Cox trying to get around the outside. Bailey Brewster, who got the start, got beat. Ball into the box, but it's an easy scoop for the senior Ruthie Jones in goal. Cox, an important piece in that game against UCLA. North Carolina end up conceding two goals, losing two to one, but still Cox coming off the bench. Very active, added a lot to the attack for North Carolina. One of the reasons why she's getting the start out on that right-hand side tonight. This ball all the way back to the goalkeeper, Richard Freshman, Emmy Allen. No goals allowed so far in her time. She's been splitting time with Mars Josephson thus far this season. Meza wants to go right up the middle for Cox. Great speed in behind. Cox puts it out of play. 
A warning shot fired from the Tar Heels. Well, excellent positioning from Meza in the midfield for North Carolina. It's just free and then allows her to go and drive at the back line. And look at that ball just been in with the outside of her foot. Cox has to do better with her final production. Just play that across the goal line. Find two teammates that are making runs into the box. Says instead gets underneath it, sends it out for a goal kick. Cox, senior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Has found herself both as a regular starter and coming off the bench in her time with the Tar Heels. Meza and Jones, it's going to be a good yeah, battle, I think, is. tonight. Tar Heels coming from an offside position, hence the flag and our stoppage. Samantha Martinez, our referee tonight. A little conversation there with Sophie Jones. <laughs> Two Royson sisters, a part of that back three for Duke. Emily Royson in the middle, and her sister Jenna, who joins her this season. Transfer from Georgetown after she had a great career there. Two-time All-Big East selection. There you get a look at Jenna. Started every match so far. Along with her sister, Emily. Those two hailing from Tom's River, New Jersey, originally. A couple of sets of sisters on this Duke team. Maggie Delaney Graham as well. And then you got the Della Pruta sisters on North Carolina. I'm telling you, Della Pruta's been dealing with an injury, but I told you about how special her younger sister Tori has been so far. I haven't called number nine's name too much just yet. Cooper. It's not really a matter of if, but when. She has her moment or two in a match. Usually more than that, but you know you're going to get at least one. She can solve pressure, and she's seen all kinds of it from different defenses this season. Patterson wants to go to the other side, has a couple of options there, Della Pruta and Cox. Ball goes wanting and in fact is going to go the other way for the Blue Devils. Here is Cooper crowd on their feet, but the offside flag is up. Well, it's such a good look at how quickly Duke with Michelle Cooper in that striker position can hurt North Carolina in transitional moments. And you can see that Michelle Cooper's just a tad offside, but a good look early on, especially with North Carolina pushing players forward, getting those outside backs of Moxley and, and Della Rose, who we had just seen get into the attack on the near side. And it's the quick turnover and Plux looking to find space in behind to play Cooper in. Yeah, I mean, we know that Duke in particular really wants to possess. They want to build but they also know they have this tremendous weapon in Cooper who can really make teams pay if they strike quickly. So they have both of those options, picking the right time to use it. Is yeah, key. It is certainly, Jen. And I think it's also when you look at the opposition and, and how many numbers North Carolina wants to get forward as well. And we've talked about Della Rose on the near side, the left outside back, and then Moxley on the far side, the right outside back. They want to get in advanced positions. They want to get numbers into the attack. So that does leave North Carolina at times exposed just with the two center backs. So if you can catch them in transitional moments, then they have a massive weapon in Michelle Cooper, but also pluck underneath who can help start that transition and counterattack quickly. Pluck on it now, has Delaney Graham in some space. Fastest player on this Blue Devil team, number 22. That looked like a handball, it was. 
So this will be a free kick for the Blue Devils. Happened outside the area. And we said coming into this game that Maggie Graham and Mackenzie Pluck are gonna have an important part to this game, playing underneath Michelle Cooper. And Pluck starts this, really good recognition from her. It is a clear handball with the ball that Delaney Graham's trying to play in and serve into the box. But Mackenzie Pluck already in this game, dropping a bit deeper, helping keep possession. Really smart play to send that ball out wide to try to serve it into the box earn them a really important set piece. Set piece is always important, and this is the first one you're really going to want to pay attention to tonight. All the way across, but out eventually. Nobody able to make connection. How fun was that though, Lori? The second that this crowd sensed Michelle Cooper had a chance to break, they were all up and ready to go. This crowd knows exactly what they've got in Michelle Cooper. And we talked about both teams having that great matchup against UCLA, which both, I think, felt rather similarly about. They both had leads, which they wound up losing. It was a 2-1 win for UCLA in both. And you learn certainly from those matches, but Duke bounced back afterward, played on the road at TCU, wound up winning that game three to one. And that was a top six team in the country at the time. And Robbie Church said, you know, we actually played a lot worse against TCU, but the big difference was we had Michelle Cooper and they didn't. <laughs> I mean, she was special, just took advantage of every mistake in that match and put them home. Two goals and an assist. And just looking at the midfield, though, for, for Duke early on in this match, Jen, I feel like they're going to need to figure out if it's going to be Pluck or Graham centrally that's going to drop deep and help with the three in the midfield for against North Carolina. We're seeing Sophie Jones and even Katie Groff get a bit exposed. It's a 2v3 situation in the midfield because Pluck and Graham are getting higher up the field trying to join into the attack with Michelle Cooper up top, but it is leaving them exposed centrally. And unfortunately, right now for Duke, North Carolina hasn't quite figured it out in terms of being able to exploit in behind or playing balls out wide to Patterson or even Isabel Cox on the far side. Meza closely trailed by Jones. Freshman Tessa Delarose on this side, number 34, has played as well as could be expected and then some, according to Anson Dorrance. Crowd will tell you who gets the ball. Remember, we are at Duke. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be deceiving throughout the 90 minutes. <laughs> On whose ball it should have been. <laughs> oh, well. You just follow the crowd in their favor, if you like. Here it's Pluck. Tariel's really all bunched together in front of her. The problem is she had nobody out wide to take advantage of the space that was there. First a touch back. Tar Heels still coming. They come at you in waves. The first wave didn't get it done. Second wave on it now. This is Meza. And Samantha Martinez looks like she's going to allow these two teams to play throughout these 90 minutes for a while. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, it is a rivalry. You expect if it starts to elevate, you're going to want to nip that in the bud at some point, but I think nothing too egregious thus far. Fox has been a handful on that far side. Had the one really good look for herself that wound up going over the crossbar. And her and Patterson's positioning is going to be incredibly key throughout this match to look to see if they can pin that back line for Duke back. And we've already seen it a few times. As soon as Duke does win it, there's not a lot of width to their formation, especially if the wing backs are, are pushed back. 
can't get into more advanced positions quickly. They have to pick and choose their times when they're going to try to build quickly and find Michelle Cooper on the break, or they're going to keep possession, allow for those wing backs to get higher up and move the ball from side to side. And interesting on that goal kick. Duke was set up for one thing, and somebody out there made the call and said, nope, we're going to send it long. We're actually going to take the goal kick. We're not going to try to build something that we expected to see early. As Robbie Church told us, they're going to grow into this match. But they do want to put a little pressure with some of those longer balls forward against North Carolina early in this one, just to loosen them up a bit. It's dangerous, though, because where that ball was won, there were a lot more Tar Heels around the ball than there were Blue Devils. Well, that is the key in this game. With both of these teams battling, who's going to win the second balls? Both are going to go up, challenge for the first. But can who, have, who can have players around to win the second ball and then start to settle in, dictate the tempo? Because both of these teams do want to build. They want to move the ball side to side. Look to serve balls in from the wide areas. Dorsey going all the way into the box. Lines up in the gloves of Jones. Ruthie Jones, all ACC first team selection last season, had a minuscule 0.59 goals against average. Tied for the second best in a season ever at Duke. Delarose out wide for Patterson. Sometimes you get a little too fancy. Maybe even throw your own teammates off. Like the idea there, but Tar Heel's not on the same page. Don't yeah. throw. It, you're exactly right, though. The starting position for Patterson is exactly right, just opening herself up to allow for those runs in those central corridors from North Carolina. It's just about the execution being a bit more decisive because of the amount of numbers that Duke gets behind the ball. And you can see how much really both teams are just having to work to even get into a good position. They combine to average about 37 shots a match. We have just one so far. And that was by North Carolina through first 15 minutes or so. Delaney Graham and Michelle Cooper trying to work their way out of a tight space. They did have the exit, and then there was a late challenge, it looked like, after the play. Well, it certainly is Michelle Cooper showing a bit of her individual magic, her ability to work her way out of trouble. She is just getting faced up, and I'm surprised that actually is not a yellow card, doesn't even get the ball, just set the tone early. We said Samantha Martinez, the. Uh, the center ref was allowing them to play, but those are the types of tackles that you don't want to get out of hand, especially against a player like Michelle Cooper, done so well to break free and brings her down. Ensuing free kick up in the air, down to the box. Still not clear, but North Carolina has it. Sophie Jones. Now you want somebody to help you solve pressure, she can do that. Bailey Brewster, sophomore out of Atlanta, making her first start of the season, got it back forward. Blue Devils building, now the ball into the box. Now Delaney Graham late coming in and trying to win that. Foul called. There's late challenge on Delaney Graham just coming in. And those are the areas that Robbie Church, though, wants his team to win. The second phase, once it's popped back out, can they be the first to that ball to send balls back in and try to catch North Carolina out defensively? You can see our Sunday best this week. Field hockey triple header will start you off. Number four, Michigan. Number five, Louisville. At noon Eastern, then two soccer matches coming your way. Army BC 130, and then Syracuse Cornell, all right here on ACCN and ESPN app. And this 
is where you might need to see a card come out soon because it is definitely increasing in intensity and there is in fact a card in the hand of Samantha Martinez. And it's not surprising because this is one of the things that Robbie Church spoke to us about is just teams being physical with Michelle Cooper. Here she is winning, winning the foot race, going to get to that ball first and just unnecessary challenge. But a lot of times the only way that teams can deal with Michelle Cooper and, and push her off of her game is, is to foul her. Now it's going to be about Duke making the most of these opportunities, these set pieces with the delivery, getting players around the ball, winning first and second. Katie Groff with the left foot service into the box, got up and over the Tar Heels, but there was a touch, so this will set up our first corner kick of the match. The Blue Devils feel they've been pretty strong offensively in terms of their set pieces thus far. I've gotten some good looks out of it. This ball bending toward that back post. Always going to be difficult to deal with that. It had some pace and some spin on it. Looked like it was even catching some more momentum as it was going to the far post. So great to be back here on site, seeing this full crowd in front of us here at Koskinen Stadium. Glad to have you along with us as well. Now, this is a non-conference matchup. My apologies, I probably should have pointed that out sooner. But these two teams didn't have each other in their conference schedule. They know they want to play these matches every year, so they added it. Non-conference, that's a huge collision. Remember, Hanson's already on a yellow. She was booked. Cooper went flying. There's no card coming here, but it is going to be another free kick for Duke. And Michelle Cooper continues to be such a nuisance. Get on that. That is a foul. That has to be a yellow card. Not even attempting to go for the ball. That should be a red card on Hansen with the double yellows. And it just highlights how well Michelle Cooper just pounces on balls. And we knew coming into this game, not only her ability in the attack, but defensively as well. Once the ball pops loose, North Carolina has to be incredibly careful defensively. Lucky not to get a player sent off in that instance. And it would be another center back. Sophie Jones, ball up in the air, keeper coming, doesn't go far. North Carolina living dangerously, conceding all of these free kicks and the corner kick thus far. Yeah, I think at these moments too, Jen, if you're Duke, you have to continue to put the pressure on North Carolina. They find it difficult to get out of their own half. That's retaliation. I mean, straight up, Michelle Cooper is sick of getting pushed around. There have been fouls called, but you might see a moment or two like that. It's fair, right? Yeah, and you expect this, though, with a, a rivalry match, just the, the heightened emotions, the intensity of the game, getting stuck in. No team really having much of the possession. Pretty back and forth in terms of the opportunities getting into the, the final third. a non-conference matchup, number two, North Carolina, number three, Duke. We thought we might have one versus two. UCLA messed us up just a little <laughs> bit <laughs> with getting wins Unlucky against each for of us. these teams. Good for them. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. Still two and three. We'll take it. Tar Heels seeing if they can take advantage now. They've finally gotten it back down into their attacking third. Patterson and Dela Rose, good combination on this side. Velcruta flying through the air. The follow-up chance blocked. Well, you better play it right when you've got Michelle Cooper breathing down your neck. What did Robbie Church tell us? That she turns from offense to defense faster than any player he's ever seen. Starts to press. Makes life difficult for the opponent. Works so hard in her defending. We've already seen that a few different times. Pouncing on some of those loose balls. I mean, there is not a tackle that's going into anything less than about 110% right now by both teams. 
as you'd expect. Duke, the preseason pick to win the ACC this year, just the second time ever that they've got the top spot from the coaches in that preseason poll. The last was 2012, after they went to the College Cup the previous year. Nope, that's not the plan, but it might still work out. Della Rose does eventually make a run for it, but Della Puta's ball winds up out of bounds. But those are where North Carolina is going to have their best opportunities. We saw it moments ago with a ball from Patterson served in and then a little combination play that didn't come off correctly just a, a second ago. But North Carolina getting into those wide areas, committing numbers into the box, quality service is where they can beat Duke, especially if they go at pace against the three back because the positioning outside in the space outside of those three center backs for Duke is going to be on all evening if they can go, go at it quickly for North Carolina. No, that was a really smart play right there by Maggie Graham. She refused to allow North Carolina to have a quick restart. Just got right in front of the ball, took away any option to do that. Patterson with the left. And right now, if you're North Carolina, you're recognizing that Patterson's had a few good opportunities and served some dangerous balls in. That's forced Ruthie Jones, the goalkeeper for Duke, to come off her line, make a big play. I like that idea, just driven on the ground, low across the, the six-yard box. I'm just waiting for somebody to go up to Daniel Jones former quarterback for the Blue Devils and, of course, current quarterback in the NFL for the Giants. Aren't you Ruthie Jones? Well, <laughs> it's an athletic family. I think she's earned it by now. So often you'll hear Ruthie Jones, his sister, as another card comes out. Meza picking it up for North Carolina. Oh, you start waxing poetic about a story and you miss a card in this one. Let's see what happened again. Uh, I feel like that's a bit of a, a tough card to pick up if you're Meza, especially with some of the tackles and the way they've gone throughout this first 25 minutes. Meza, one of those players not afraid to get stuck into some tackles, but not really warranting a yellow card in that moment. Looks like we do have first substitution of the match. Cat Raider, number two, freshman out of Stewart, Florida. Has three goals, one assist, all in the last four matches. Short place, Pluck. Raiders started four matches on the season. And it looks like North Carolina. Allie Sentner has also come on, as well as Libby Moore. So Sentner number 21, Moore number 20. And so we begin. North Carolina, always a challenge for the announcers to keep up with the substitutes, but I promise you we got the best in the booth up here helping me out. And we will try to keep you updated on all the changes as well. But as Anson Dorrance always says, I've got great players, so I'm going to play them. And he does. I think, obviously, Jen, with Duke playing at home, having a lot of injuries, energy in this first 25 minutes, but with North Carolina starting to make their changes, fresh legs, continuing to press, how do they break that initial press in the attack and then slow things down and be patient in the build, not try to match the intensity of the game 90 minutes, especially with the rotations that North Carolina employ. And that is always the question against North Carolina, but for a Duke team that can play and wants to build and keep possession, it's gonna be key for the Sophie Jones and even Groff in the midfield to get a hold of the game. So there's changes for North Carolina. One happening in the midfield, one happening in the front line. Cooper asking for it, gets it. Surrounded by a sea of blue. Jones. Groff quickly closed upon. Lays out to keep a possession for Duke. Maggie Graham, younger sister to her older sister, Delaney. And such an important tackle from Groff centrally, just to win possession back, allow for Duke to maintain possession, 
get numbers back behind the ball. Robbie Church highlighting one of the reasons why she's been so important, allow Sophie Jones to be able to settle things down. Groff makes the tackles, wins the second balls. Really good partnership in the center of the field for Duke. This could be trouble for North Carolina. Nope, the flag is up. So Sentner's forward progress is halted. An incredible young player had to wait longer than expected to make her Tar Heel debut. Was injured in the first scrimmage tour ACL last year after coming out of high school with all kinds of accolades. Three-time United Soccer Coaches All-American and the Player of the Year nationally. And finally getting back out in the field for the Tar Heels this year. Good-looking ball across, but it bounces to the goalkeeper. And we've seen Sittner play in the, the right wing position, but Isabel Cox still in the game, so Sittner will come in as more of the number nine. But she'll have the ability to float out wide at times, so the fluidity looks a little bit different for North Carolina's front three. Really important for Duke just to stay disciplined, those three center backs not get pulled out, not go chasing, just make sure that they stay, they stay tight as a unit connected together. See Nikki Chico, number 17, one of the changes for Duke. Devin Lynch is also ready to come on, but has not done so yet. Looks like Chico took Jenna Royson's spot as part of that back three. Still scoreless with about 15 minutes to go in our first half. In case you missed it, told you this meeting last year wound up a 1-0 victory for Duke. It was a test body goal. One of three key fifth-year players no longer with this Blue Devil team. But what a pass there from Cooper. Ball just got stuck on the foot a little, though. No further progress from Raider. Now the shot, an easy save in the end for Allen. If you just watch the movement of Michelle Cooper, so good, and the way that she receives the ball, whether it's back to goal, always on the move, uses her momentum to be able to spin, and this time looks to play pluck in. Just can't get a shot off, and, and well done for North Carolina again, because they've been very good in the attack to defense transition to get numbers behind, make it predictable for themselves. Tapped out will still be long to North Carolina. Cox gets it on the throw. Second ball brought down by the Tar Heels, shot blocked. Della Rose closely marked. One back by Patterson. Good spell of possession here from the Tar Heels. Della Rose, one touch. And the movement from North Carolina is so smart. When Della Rose, the left back for North Carolina, is providing the width, and you can see Patterson, the right wing, pinch inside. Makes it difficult for Duke defensively to pick up and decide who's going to go to who, who's going to match up with the, the defender or the, the attacker. Such fluid movement and so important to the way that North Carolina wants to attack. Just have to continue to be patient when they are moving the ball.
Patterson knew right where she wanted to put the ball. And North Carolina will have to concede the goal kick. More subs coming for both teams. That is Devin Lynch, number six, who came on. You see Emily Murphy, one of the changes, along with Ali Gambone, one of the captains for North Carolina. So number 16 and number 35, both in for North Carolina. There you see Gambone, senior out of Clifton, Virginia. Murphy, maybe with a bit of a heavy heart, sophomore out of Windsor, England. Of course, after the news of the passing of Queen Elizabeth II earlier today. Sad moment around the world. Meza. Boy, a lot of room between the lines right now for her to work with. Moxley continues the run. A little confusion in the box, but eventually it is cleared. Well, that is the best buildup that we've seen from North Carolina in this first 45 minutes, and a lot of it has to do with Meza and her positioning. At times, just pulling out wide, staying out of the play when necessary, has loads of space to be able to drive at the back line and create. ball actually yeah that ball was in bounds when Ruthie Jones caught it she stepped out and she just gives North Carolina their first corner kick momentum probably carried her a little but still surprising and it's Della Rose that continues to find just a bit of space to try to serve dangerous balls in this time it does force Ruthie Jones to come off her line and she's the one as you mentioned Jen does step out of bounds, sets North Carolina up for a free kick. With some of the height advantage, you have Corey Hansen in the back line, 5'10", certainly be a target. She goes for it and it goes in! You called it, partner! Hansen flying through the air, the Tar Heels strike off the set piece! Well, it starts with a, a mistake from Ruthie Jones just stepping out of bounds that gives North Carolina their first corner kick and almost against the run of play because up until this moment in this last few minutes of North Carolina getting some of possession, really been back and forth game, but it's a good looking ball in and then it's Tori Hansen just gets a little bit of space to be able to run, make the play on it, makes no mistake. All she has to do is rise up in traffic. Does look like it actually comes off of a Duke player to find the back of the net. But it doesn't matter, it's a good service right into the mix, tons of bodies around it. Tori Hansen with her height advantage will always be the target on that play for her second goal of the season. Puts North Carolina up 1-0 late in this first half. So you're gonna keep credit to her? I don't know, that replay, I thought it was her too. We all saw her flying toward the goal. Now there actually was a yellow card issued to the North Carolina bench for celebration after the goal. Every single player off the bench on the field for North Carolina. You can see how much that means to them in this rivalry game, playing at Duke. You know, coming into this game, Jen, Robbie Church did highlight set pieces being critical to success of this game and such fine margins up until that point, had it conceded, done so well, Duke, defensively, to really deny North Carolina a lot of quality opportunities. Nothing that really tested Ruthie Jones. Just a one mistake, stepping out of bounds on a, on a cross that really wasn't going to challenge Duke defensively. Set him up for that ability to find Hansen on that far post. That is how fine the margins are in this match. And if you lose your focus for a second, both of these teams have the skill, the quality to be able to make you pay. North Carolina also scored their first goal against UCLA, their only goal of that match, for that matter, off a corner. So, second straight match for the Tar Heels getting a goal from a corner kick.
Sentner brings it down. It is immediately pounded by a couple, but boy, she got back to her feet well. Yeah, what a first touch. <laughs> the ball was coming in, and she just cradles it down. Keeps balance of herself and is able to try to create. Final pass just doesn't come off. And it's an important time right now, though, for Duke, has been in this game the entire first half. It needs to make sure, though, they don't fall into a defensive posture, allow for those center backs for North Carolina to play make, play those long balls out of the back. Here comes the pressure, and it results in a turnover. North Carolina taking it over. Colton. done a lot of nice things on this near side when they've both been in the match. That was Colton a moment ago. Gambone now. Hansen, saw an opening, put the ball there for Colton, had to be cleared out and was. Nikki Chico, substitute in this first half, having to make the play. Well, Colton and Meza have been so important to the buildup for North Carolina. This is their another attacking center mid outside of Meza trying to get on the end of this ball. And it really, that positioning from Colton drives those defenders back for Duke and allows for space to open up. Good spacing by North Carolina. We got Colton with the ball in the box, but then a little dribbler able to be picked up by the Blue Devils and cleared. Had the assist from the corner on Hansen's goal. Tar Heels threatening again. Tipped up and across by Jones. Della Rose. Left foot's been busy. Not a good touch. That could be trouble but Murphy wasn't able to capitalize. Forward they go. feel that we had in the moments prior to that goal. Things settling a little bit here with about five minutes to play in the first half. North Carolina scoring in the 35th minute from a corner kick. Tori Hansen, Moxley sent the corner in. And, and here's that positioning though, Jen. You mentioned not the hectic pace, and a lot of that again has to do with number one, Meza, the attacking center mid, and where she's picking up space. Will pop wide, but just float away from the ball, and it's so important to the buildup for North Carolina, and then draws the attention to her, and then finds the open player, and allows them to go out the other side. Such an important piece into the attack for North Carolina, especially a team that does want to go with pace. They do want to press the numbers forward, but to have a player like Meza, who's seen her make her way off the field now in these final moments of this game, but to slow things down at the right moment and dictate the tempo of this game so important for North Carolina, especially going into the second 45. A couple of substitutions for North Carolina. There is an offside flag up here to stop things. That was Ruby Grant, number three, and Lauren Wrigley, number 11, who came on for the Tar Heels. Grace Watkins also came on in place of Cooper to give her just a little bit of a breather here at the end of the first half. A 
And that's the position I'm talking about for North Carolina, just always finding an open player in the center of the field. Excuse me, Duke has to do a better job of rotating a bit quicker to shut down the pressure because it's an easy build out from the back for North Carolina in those deeper positions. And that was Wrigley, touch to Gambone. Moxley. Moxley back out wide for Murphy. Still chance, player down, no whistle. Crowd wanted Duke to look for a counter there, but the team not ready. Didn't really have numbers, and remember no Cooper on the field at the moment. Loves to get herself up this sideline. Well, leaves the service a little wanting. Well, ACC PM is back tomorrow to recap and preview all things ACC. You can join Mark Packer, Taylor Tannenbaum, and Trey Boston live from the basement tomorrow at 4 Eastern. here tonight. Minute and a half left of our first half. Visiting Tar Heels in the lead. That's a foul against North Carolina. Duke saw a chance to get it up to Raider quickly. Duke just one shot so far in this match. They averaged already about 16 in the game for the season. I think they're going to have to try to find a way to get a little bit more threatening in their attack. Well, yeah, and we're, we just saw in that last attack how narrow the game is right now for Duke, and it allows North Carolina defensively just to funnel centrally and get numbers behind the, the ball carrier. Not enough width, and then when they do provide the width, it's just slow, and it allows North Carolina again to get even more numbers behind the ball. So how can you go with speed? How can you provide width? And at times, we're seeing them in, pin back in a five back. But if they can sort it out where it's only four at a time and then on the near side of the ball, have width from one of their wing backs quicker to solve some of the pressure earlier on. Well, it's a season low in shots in any half this year. Just the one for Duke. They trail North Carolina by a goal after our first 45 minutes. This one far from over. Oh, certainly. And it's such a, a fun game. Exactly what we would think in terms of intensity, energy to start this match. And we talked about it. Fine margins between the two. North Carolina earning the first corner kick and capital luck. Okay. It's a, a test that... I never continue. want to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Most people don't, <laughs> but it does continuously get a bit quicker, a bit quicker, and you have to stay with the beeps, and she essentially commanded it or dominated it at a 57. There she is, Tessa Delarose. We'll see if her journey's full rays forward continue in the second half. We'll also see how Duke comes out, tries to find an answer here. On their home field, this is a non-conference matchup between these two teams. They will not meet in ACC play this season, but it is always a challenge, especially when the rankings to the left of those names are as high as they are. Number two, North Carolina Tar Heels were number one before that loss to UCLA. Duke number three. They also dropped down a spot after losing to the Bruins. Looks like 
to start the second half. North Carolina is going to be on the attack early. Glances out of bounds. There is just one change. North Carolina, same 11 that started the match. For Duke, one change in the back. Number 17 in white, Nikki Chico stays on. She came on as a sub in the first half, has started two matches this season, so she's in the back in place of Bailey Brewster, who made her first start of the season earlier tonight. Every ball back has to be played with a little bit of trepidation, I think, with both teams, the way that both Duke and North Carolina can really get after you if that pass is not spot on. And that's the one area for, for Duke when they do want to build out. Just realize that the pressure is going to come quickly, so the movements, the angles off the ball have to be there to be able to, to play around that press, especially trying to get an equalizer early on in this second 45. Just be patient, but be smart as well. Giving you a reminder of who's out there for North Carolina. 15 Patterson on the left along with Della Peruta and Cox in the top. Into the area it goes. Ball is saved. Off the post. The crowd applauds the defending. You got to back up your goalkeeper. Well, this is exactly what you want to do as a defender. If you're beat, you see Ruthie Jones coming off her line. Just track back. Get behind the ball, making sure you don't help to find the back of the net. Well done from Isabel Cox. This is always going to be a tough angle, though. The first touch takes her away. Corner kick, last one resulted in a goal. Hansen got her head to it again. How dangerous, how good has North Carolina been from the corner? Well, it's going back to the point that we made in the first half with Robbie Church saying set pieces on both sides of the ball are going to be so important in this game. Again, it's Hanson. Look at that little movement. Darts to the near post and just pulls back to give herself a little bit of time to make the play. Ruthie Jones and help of teammates there to make the play, keep it out of the back of the net for a second time and two opportunities for North Carolina. By the way, Emmy Allen still in goal there for North Carolina. That's a change. The Tar Heels have swapped goalkeepers at halftime all season to this point, but Anson Doran's telling us he was going to stick with Allen. Feels she has had the performances to earn staying in there, and they've conceded some goals when she's come out, so she will remain in net. And Tar Heels will try to preserve the win and the shutout, but a long way to go. North Carolina really on the attack, though, here in these opening minutes of the second half. Kenzie Pluck. Working around Hansen. Smooth. The pass back not quite on, and Pluck knocked head over heels. And the attack stops dead in its tracks for the Blue Devils. This that last corner kick attempt by North Carolina. And initially, it's good positioning from Lucy Jones, just makes herself big. But then she's coming down, loses control, and you see all the bodies around. But really good positioning defensively again from Duke just to keep this game only at one. Yeah, that is both good and bad. It's great that your defenders have you covered. It's bad when your defenders have already made two saves and you're not even five minutes into the second half if you're Duke. Well, certainly, but that is something you expect against the North Carolina team with the amount of pressure that they put on you. It's just about riding those moments and, again, staying patient. You've got to start to find Sophie Jones in the middle of the park. You have to find Katie Groff. They're the ones that have to get a hold of the game, allow for easy save in the end there for Ruthie Jones. But they're the ones that are going to have to get a hold of the game, allow for Duke to slow things down at, at times, but also build up, get more players in advanced positions. And as the first half wore on, that's where Duke started to struggle. They were so pinned back defensively. When they did win the ball, they didn't have enough players in advanced positions to be able to bypass the initial press from North Carolina. Maza 
be really praised for work, her positioning in the first half in the midfield. And in fact, she was a player that her head coach, Anson Doran, said he thought was the best player on the field in that matchup against UCLA last week. Well, even if you just look at the positioning and how she started the second half, we in the first half we saw her pull out wide at times, staying out of the play when necessary. This time just slowing things down, staying composed, and we've mentioned it a few times throughout this game, Jen. This is the North Carolina team that wants to go at speed. They want to put numbers forward, and when you have a player like Meza in the midfield that can slow things down at times, just it gives them a different look when they are in the attack, when they are on the ball and in possession. Del Rose and Patterson together on that far side once again, trying to get around the defense. Delaney Graham, number 22, and her sister Maggie Graham, number 19, both over defending along with Katie Groff. Nowhere to go. And a goal kick coming. Ruthie Jones made her 48th consecutive start for the Blue Devils in goal tonight. told you about some sisters, just mentioned the Graham sisters for Duke. Well, there are actually three pairs of sisters on the field. Look at these. Oh, my gosh. Break out the oohs <laughs> and the ahs. There's Tori and Talia Della Peruta. Talia still dealing with a bit of an injury for North Carolina. The Royson sisters for Duke united this season after Jenna joining Emily transferred in from Georgetown and Delaney and Maggie Graham. Oh, come on. So cute. <laughs> Love those and appreciate their families and their sports information directors helping us track those down. There are 50 pairs of sisters playing on teams together across the United States, six in the ACC. Got half of them on the field tonight. Colton in the middle for North Carolina, out to Meza. Meza defended by Jones. Cox back to Meza. Beautiful combination work from the Tar Heels. It is so good. It's so good by Meza. Just draws players in. This time it's Sophie Jones. And it's a quick little combination play. No one tracks Meza. Gets herself free. And that's the exact right ball that she wants to play across. Just cuts it back. Again, well defended though from Duke to get numbers behind the ball. Make the play. Highlights again why Meza is such an important player, special player for this North Carolina team. Play the final pass, but take herself, take on 1v1 on the dribble as well and create opportunities on her own. 8-1 to one shots in favor of North Carolina. And I'm going to tell you, Lori, I'm going to see if you agree on this. That little connection and movement off the ball from Meza is as good as I think I've seen at any level. You and I both watched the U.S. play on Tuesday night. We cover the NWSL all the time. That was spectacular. Yeah, it certainly is. And it's special because those are the types of runs out of the midfield that other midfielders defending don't want to have to track. And so if you can bait the defenders, draw two in, and this quick combination, you see how free she is to get in behind. Didn't make great connection on the cutback ball. The credit for Duke hanging on with dear life, though defensively getting numbers back in front of Ruthie Jones defensively. I mentioned the U.S. team, by the way, Sam Meza has had some experience with the U-20 team, was on the CONCACAF team that won previously. And then there are players for both of these teams that were on this most recent USA U-20 team that competed at the World Cup. Cooper, one of those for Duke, along with their teammate Karina Laguerre, who's injured out tonight. And then Ali Sentner, Natalia Della Pruta, older sister of Tori, on the team for the Tar Heels. Here's Olivia Migley. Can Duke find a way to be patient once they finally do break that pressure and get a chance to possess a little bit. And 
Meza takes it away from Pluck. Jones to Cooper. Not exactly sure what Pluck was trying to do with that ball, but it winds up with Emmy Allen. Richard freshman Allen who has been coming to North Carolina camp since she was in fifth grade from High Point, North Carolina, starting goalkeeper for the Tar Heels this year in a redshirt freshman season. shut down because the game is just too narrow for, for Duke right now. On the initial dribble out of the midfield, Pluck either has to pull wide or just get out of the play altogether because when she receives it, it's just easy for North Carolina to close her down with two or three numbers. No one asking questions of the North Carolina defense by going wide, pulling them out, and then allowing for gaps to open up in the central areas. A couple of early changes. Remember, you are allowed one re-entry in college soccer in the second half. So certainly could see those players who came out come back on. Libby Moore came on for Pierce in that holding midfield spot for North Carolina. And then Kat Raider came on for Olivia Migley for Duke in the attack. Hanson, the goal scorer for the Tar Heels. Her second goal of the season. Header off a corner kick in the 35th minute. Cooper so good on that turn. Even if you're ready for it, it's hard to stop. North Carolina slowed her down just enough that time. Big ball across, good switch by the Blue Devils. Puck had to work a little to keep it in, keep control. Graham goes back for Groff. Now forward again. Raider just came into the match. Delaney Graham. High ball, won by Hansen. But that's better from Duke. Moving the ball, finding the wide channels, switching the point of play to the far side. Always going to be a tough ball with that ball just looping up in the air. The final cross that was served in. I want to give you our week two college football lineup coming your way on Saturday for ACCN and ESPN app. Number 15, Miami hosting Southern Miss. That's at noon Eastern. Then Furman goes to Death Valley to take on number five, Clemson. Western Carolina and Georgia Tech are on ACC Network Extra at seven. And the day is capped off by our ACCN primetime matchup. Boston College and Virginia Tech. That's in Blacksburg at 8 p.m. Eastern. You know our friend Morgan Conklin, you might have seen at halftime doing a great job in calling the Virginia match earlier tonight. Happy about that, former Hokie. Oh, good looking ball across. As our producer reminds me, sorry to Morgan's husband, it is now Morgan Bowen, who you saw at halftime, but she was Morgan Conklin when she played at Virginia Tech. A couple changes were made just a few moments ago by both teams. For North Carolina, Ali Sentner came back in along with Maddie Dahlien, a most speedy freshman out of Minnesota. And then for Duke, no changes on that last time around. Here is Dahlien, number five. Looks like there was a trip and a free kick. Nope. Don't go the other way. Oh, it does look like it's actually an offside call. Great call by the assistant referee. 
Well, Dalim is really going to challenge for anything that comes near her with that speed. Out of, is it Adina, Adina, Minnesota? I apologize. Maybe somebody <laughs> is a Minnesotan can please tell me exactly how to say her hometown. But she was both Minnesota Ms. Soccer and Ms. Track and Field. Okay, so state champion in the 100, 200, and 400. So, yeah, there's some speed, there's some endurance. You know there's some fight if she's a Tar Heel. Could be a fun freshman to watch as the season goes along for North Carolina. Meza, causing problems once again. Here's Darlene. And it's those second balls that we've talked about. Meza just opting not to go into the first opportunity to try to win, just back off, collects the ball, and then starts the attack for North Carolina. Moxley has her cross block, but does get back onto it. Second one, a pretty good one. Raider just gets it out of danger. And Moxley's had a few good services of balls from the wide areas. And this is a player that wasn't initially starting. We talked about Julia Dorsey having to rotate into the right center back position after occupying the right back position throughout. And because of injuries with Macy Bell and then Kaylee Herr force him to make some changes. You can just see the depth though. These players stepping up when they're called upon, making a making a case for themselves. Mox has had a really good game down this right hand side. I was going to ask how, how you feel that bit of a patchwork back line has been for North Carolina. I mean, obviously Duke has been frustrated trying to get much in the attack. Well, I think when you look at the player up top, though, for Duke as well, Michelle Cooper, some tough challenges early on, in particular for Hanson, who did score the goal. We even talked about how fortunate she got in the first half, not picking up that second yellow card early on. That's a great point. But for the most part, this back line for North Carolina has done really well to squeeze the game, not allow a lot of space and time for Michelle Cooper to, one, receive the ball without pressure but also find space to get in behind. And a lot of credit goes to that midfield for North Carolina, denying the service to not be able to play that initial ball in behind for Michelle Cooper to be able to exploit. Time ticking away on the Blue Devils. They come in having scored a goal in 19 straight matches. They have, however, faced deficits and found their way out of them a couple of times already this season. Probably the most notable being that road trip to Knoxville, Tennessee, down two. And then they wind up scoring a flurry of goals, three goals in 11 minutes to wind up winning that match, three to two, in front of a very hostile crowd in Knoxville, Tennessee. Dorsey, one of the players that had to shift more central, the lacrosse national champion for the Tar Heels. There was a whistle, foul called. The North Carolina ball. And it has been a good matchup, as we, we mentioned early on, between Sophie Jones and Sam Meza, the two of them going after. And got to give the a hat tip, though, to Meza. And just the positioning of North Carolina in general, allowing for them to, to get more players around the ball work their way out of pressure a lot easier than we've seen Duke throughout this game. Oh, that ball had eyes and a good run on the end of it, too. As Patterson got herself in a good position. Looks like she's in the corner. And initially, I thought this ball, a good ball in, but always going to be difficult with just the positioning of Patterson. That first touch is going to take her away. I'm not sure if I saw the touch yeah. of, of Duke. And every corner <laughs> yeah. has been so dangerous. Who should we watch, do you think, Glory? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe number 22. <laughs> Jansen's been a great target. It was headed that way. Didn't quite make it. A couple of runners in the box for North Carolina. The Blue Devil was able to escape danger that time. Yeah. 
actually an offside call player coming from an offside position for Duke. So that's why North Carolina getting the ball right around midfield. Long ball into the box. I guess actually that was a foul on Cooper. That's what officially caused the restart that last time around. Colleen. Oh, our friend Jonathan Yardley, by the way, tells me it is a Dinah. <laughs> I, I trust Yardley to, course, to yeah. be right on that. Yeah. So. I do know Dinah. Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan. Yes. <laughs> Fourth quarter kick coming up for the Tar Heels. Tessa Delrose, a freshman for the Tar Heels. Out of Grindstone, Pennsylvania. 108 goals in her high school career, number one all time. Boy, she likes that left foot, you can see why. That was just a rocket going across. Not much air under the ball, the reservice. So at what point, Lori, if you're Duke, do you have to try to switch things up maybe a little bit? Take more chances, maybe try to do something to get a little more offensive in this match. Well, I was just watching Robbie Church and he was motioning to his team to step up, get more, get close the ground, get more players forward earlier on because they're just retreating so far back. It's allowing for North Carolina to be able to win the first ball and then find those wide areas where they've had some success to earn these corner kicks that have been so dangerous for them throughout the second 45. So at some point in time, yes, you start to have to start taking chances, getting players higher up. But I do think it starts with Pluckin and Graham sitting right underneath Michelle Cooper. Can they stay a little bit more central? Yes, it doesn't allow you to get the width early on, but it does allow you to connect your first pass and bypass that pressure from North Carolina and then get Sophie Jones and then get your outside wing backs going forward higher up. Their initial, initial starting point is too wide. Makes it too predictable for North Carolina. Well, step one is to keep the ball under intense pressure. Foul on Pluck and Jones with the restart. Problem is most of the Blue Devils were still behind the ball on that restart. And that's what I was saying for Pluck. She's done such a good job of being able to drive at the back line once she picks up the ball, finding some good space. But a lot of it is wide, so they can squeeze her to the sidelines, North Carolina. And it's just too slow to get supporting angles around her. Decisions here for Chico. Maybe not the right one in the end. Did you see who, who that is, though, that collected that ball from North Carolina? I looked away for a second. That's a, thank you. <laughs> Why do you have to quiz me when I look down? <laughs> just the work rate to, to get back as well. Yeah, she's been everywhere. <laughs> quiz you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> It's okay. Actually, I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep me on my toes, Lori <laughs> Lindsay, I know. Under 20 minutes to go now. A couple more changes. You might have seen Maggie Pierce came back into the match in that holding midfield spot for North Carolina. Emily Murphy, a player we saw in the first half, number 35, back on the field. In place is Avery Patterson. And we did not see Kate Fossey in the first half, number 26, but she makes her way in, has appeared in all the games thus far for the Tar Heels off the bench. Jones laid out, foul called. And it's the right call, but you can see that Jones is having to sit on the ball a bit too much because there is no outlet to be able to play forward. And as she plays back, she just knows that North Carolina and their ability to repress quickly put the back line of Duke under pressure. That's 
Tough tackle by Pierce. Maggie Graham still feeling it on the ground, but North Carolina surging forward. Maggie Graham is still down in the middle of the field, but there's been no whistle. The Tar Heels going to continue on. Well, they've got the ball in their attacking third. Now we'll see <laughs> a fortuitous bounce goes out. It'll be a throw, but certainly there's got to be some concern for the junior out of Atlanta. It's Maggie Graham on the ground. And I thought initially the tackle from Pierce looked a little late. It was tough to be sure. I mean, she, timing was good. the first tough tackle that we've seen throughout this game. Quite a few in the first half. Both players, though, going in. Well, hopefully she'll be all right. But in the meantime now, this does give both teams a chance to talk things through. So Ravi Church and his group try to figure out how they can Hang on to the ball. I think that's the first step, right? They just, when they get it, to be able to keep it, work around that pressure, and then try to create something in the attacking third. They've been so quiet offensively, just two shots on the night. And those front three that we've talked about have plucked Graham. Graham who's down now, so we'll see what type of substitution that they make Duke. But then Cooper as well. What does the movement look like to occupy some of those defenders from North Carolina to be able to play forward? So Sosa Jones on that on the last plays, looking for a, a pass forward, wasn't there, gets them caught. They're fortunate enough to get out though from the foul. But that's what's gonna break them free because of the numbers that North Carolina employs in terms of getting into advanced positions, does leave them exposed and it's something that Duke hasn't been able to take advantage of though because they haven't been able to play forward quickly and connect that first pass to get more players into their final third. So Graham off, but at least walking around a bit gingerly. And the sub officially was made with Elle Piper coming on in her place. Number eight, freshman of San Jose, California. Duke thought an offside flag should have come up on that play. They didn't wind up needing it anyway. You know, as much as it's been difficult for Duke, especially in this second half, to be able to be threatening near their attacking goal, outside of the, the few set pieces, they've limited North Carolina for some clear opportunities. North Carolina certainly have had the better of the play and feel like the momentum in their hands. Duke hanging on strong. Takes a lot of bravery to stay on the ball the way Mackenzie Pluck has done in this match. And she's been a nuisance every time she's picked up the ball, forcing Meza to come back, make the play defensively, earns the foul. But Pluck has picked up some really good positions just drifting off the back line. Still think there's times for her to float centrally even more, have more options in the attack. Boy, had that ball been just a little to the right or left, Pluck was wide open and waiting for it, but it was cleared initially by the Carolina defense. Cooper. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Sophie Jones just called for the handball, just pops up. The right idea though for Sophie Jones, good positioning, trying to circulate the ball around herself. Exactly where you want Sophie Jones. She's been pinned back the majority of the match. Maybe that's one of the changes, trying to get her into a little bit more of an advanced position. You've been talking about that support underneath Michelle Cooper being so important hasn't been there consistently for Duke, or at least has not been utilized enough tonight.
Ball in the box, header, up and out. Oh, that's a good run from North Carolina. Looks like it's... Deep run from midfield. Always tough to track. Meza, another good ball in the box, and it gets thrown! North Carolina doubles the lead late! Emily Murphy, her third goal of the season! And it's such a good ball from Meza, just whipped in behind. You can see the defenders from Duke facing their own goal. That's what allows it to get make its way through. The right amount of pace, the right amount of the spin on it. Meza again floats wide just to give herself a little bit of time. Takes a few touches to get her head up. And that's a good run from Murphy to influence the defenders of Duke. It just finds its way to the back of the net past Ruthie Jones. But look at that ball in behind. There's the touch off the Duke defender facing her own goal. And it's so difficult to defend when those balls are whipped in behind. Doesn't allow Ruthie Jones to come off her line. But you have to make a play if you're a defender. And it's a touch that finds the back of the net. And what a ball from Meza to put her team up 2-0. 15 minutes left to go. And you said it, Jen, now Duke's really going to have to come out of their shape, start to send players forward. Well, it was interesting because I was nodding along with you, agreeing that Duke, for the most part, had limited a lot of dangerous opportunities, even though North Carolina had had more of the ball, had got into their attacking third, but there was a ball prior to that one that went skidding out of bounds that was closed, and then that one coming in. So they were getting some more dangerous service. And that one, hey, you know, if you're Murphy, sometimes you put yourself in the right spot. You stride your way onto a ball, you get a goal. Yeah, and you know, just looking at this North Carolina team as well, we talk a lot, and Anson's mentioned how much they want to press, and a lot of teams don't employ that throughout the 90 minutes where they bring on their substitutes. We see the rotations and players. But a lot of credit, though, to the rotations that they have with the players on the field that allows for Meza to be able to drift wide and, and showcase some of her talent to provide the width. But they still have numbers centrally, whether it's an outside back tucking in from the, the far side or, or a winger from the, the outside position on the far side to allow for those numbers up situation. They still have coverage. It's so important to highlight that because it's about the movement off the ball that allows North Carolina not just their press. Yeah, because that certainly is what gets talked about a lot, but that's a good wrinkle to also keep an eye on. And now, how about this? So the first goal of this match was scored on a set piece, corner kick for North Carolina. Robbie Church for Duke said how important these were going to be for both teams. Is this a moment Duke can take advantage of? Jones bending toward the goal. Goalkeeper blocked by her own defender. What a tantalizing ball. And Duke just couldn't be there, the one to get to it first. Well, listen, that's exactly what you want from your goalkeeper. If you have to make the play, you're going to come out. You're going to come out commanding, make the play. And it did look like she got a piece of Hanson Allen, the goalkeeper for North Carolina. And there's a foul here, which is going to give the ball to the Tar Heels. Katie Groff gimping, gimping, limping away after that play. <laughs> she was called for the foul. It's kind of a tough call. I'd be gimping there too. <laughs> Still plenty of time for Duke to play with here. If they can get it to number 18, <laughs> that ball just wound up behind her. And then Mackenzie Pluck. Whew. Look, the ball to the head just kept right on going. And it's, we're lucky to see 
McKenzie Pluck still standing. Another right to the to the head with that clearance. Yeah, close range. As well, Cox, Avery Patterson back in for North Carolina. Patterson's going to get to this ball first. North Carolina looking for three. It is blocked. Great defending by Duke on the play. Yeah, great recovery. Great energy to get behind. It's Piper that makes the play. But what a ball for Meza. Just finds a little bit of space. We've seen her play a few of those balls. Just the outside of the foot, bending ball into the path. There's going to be a yellow card. Emily Royson, I think, the player who picked it up for Duke. It is on Royson. So she's number 15 there. Now it may well have been for some, no, it was that. Okay. I was going to say something said after, but that made it pretty clear. Core kick for the Tar Heels. Hansen tries to track it down. Didn't have momentum on her side, though, and she did make contact. Now, remember that this is not an ACC contest tonight. This is a non-conference matchup, technically. Conference play starts next week. We will have it for you on Thursday night. Our primetime matchup going to be in Clemson for that one. Notre Dame will be in town as well. But regardless of the score line and how this game ends, such an important matchup for both of these teams. And both coaches coming into this game, Jen, had highlighted the importance of playing one another, what a rivalry it is, good competition, but also highlights the areas where, you, where each team needs to get better and, and where they have been effective so far early on in this season. It sets them up perfectly going into conference play. There's a lot to feel good about, certainly for both teams, but mostly for North Carolina, the way this has gone so far. I mean, they have just made life incredibly difficult for Duke and their star player, Michelle Cooper, all night long. Especially coming off the loss over the weekend on Sunday versus UCLA, 2-1. to one. And When you look at that game, though, North Carolina, majority of the possession, a lot of opportunities for them to, to really have control of that game. Just two brilliant goals from UCLA. Credit to them. Took the chances when needed, but Anson Dorn's head coach at North Carolina felt really good game for them, and that was going to be the two goals that UCLA was going to score. Then, okay, they'll take it, especially early on in the season. I still want to know how Raylan Turner for UCLA did not get National <laughs> Player of the Week. My goodness. I mean, she goes on the road. She scores the game-winning goal against both number one and number two in the country with North Carolina Duke, respectively. I don't know how you do better. And, Jen, those weren't just two goals. They were spectacular <laughs> goals. And she threw a penalty kick, too, yeah. let's not forget. Yeah, it was really good. She gets she gets National Player of the Week in my book. But, you know, you were talking about North Carolina, and they were saying, hey, look, UCLA ascended to number one. If that's number one, well, we feel pretty good about what we saw it and how we played against it. And I think they're also going to feel pretty good about the way they played against the ACC preseason favorites on the road here in Durham tonight. Great crowd on hand tonight. Both shades of blue well represented. And getting a pretty good show, although they've gone a bit quiet now as, as we are nearing later into the night. Oh, no, they're not quiet. <laughs> Eight minutes to go. They, they spot the camera, right? They feel it. They probably see it up on the big screen. We always have a little bit of energy left for that. To like the way their Tar Heels have come out tonight as well. By the way, the road for North Carolina not going to get any easier once they jump into conference play. 
you may know the team they've got coming up next. Lori, that would be your alma mater, Virginia Cavaliers, currently ranked number five in the country, one of six ranked teams in this conference. Always so tough. Duke, meanwhile, goes on the road to Syracuse for their conference opener. Bone back on the field for North Carolina, making her presence felt. Great ball, great effort on the header. The follow up and another one. North Carolina thinks they have three, and they do. And it's the wide areas that we saw North Carolina start to exploit late in the first half. And then especially in this second 45, on this right-hand side, a lot of success, finding space. It's a good ball in from Gambone initially. Just gets her head up and whips this ball in. And then well done defensively to stay tight. But it's the second phase of runners for North Carolina. Keeps this one alive. And does look like it comes off Cox in the end. Ball's well hit, just low driven, and then Cox puts herself in a great position, tries to evade the ball. Does well enough, though, to ricochet his offer and finds the back of the net, and that's 3-0 for North Carolina. Just seven minutes left to go. Well, no, no matter how it comes, sticking a shin out and getting the ball in the back of the net, you'll take it. First goal of the season for Cox, who Anson Doran says does everything you want a nine to do. She just hasn't put the ball in the back of the net enough. And listen, I'm not even sure she meant it, but well done. It doesn't matter. Isabel Cox put herself in a great position to affect the play and didn't even need to do much in terms of redirecting it. Just hit herself, hit off her to find. And I was trying to see. I know Emily Colton wound up with the assist. Was she the player, too, that came flying through and just kept it? with the header, got her head onto it. I was trying to see if that was her or if it was Pounderson coming over from that far side. Whoever did that and kept that ball alive is what really gave the Tar Heels the goal. And the amount of pressure, the amount of players that they send forward, North Carolina, just so difficult to sustain that type of pressure if you're Duke and the game wears on and the amount of rotations they have in personnel as well. Difficult for, for Duke That's to ever get a hold of this game. You know, I think this North Carolina team came in with a bit of a fire that was lit in an uncharacteristic way after the way that things went last season. They had some things happen that have never happened in the program before. They did not make it to the ACC tournament for the first time ever. They were knocked out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. First time ever. They come into this season more hungry than ever. And their only loss so far, that one to UCLA in their last match, they've bounced back in a big way. 3-0 lead at Duke tonight. And this is always the, the tough issue against North Carolina late in games, is they're still putting pressure on. But if you're hunting the game, you're having to send players forward, it does leave you exposed defensively and starting to see some of the gaps open up for North Carolina. Patterson finding a little bit of space to, to try to make a play on. And it was Patterson, by the way, our, our crew helping me out, looking back at that video, who just bravely got her body onto the ball. Helping North Carolina get their third goal of the night. They got the scoring started on a corner kick in the 35th minute. You said, watch out for Tori Hansen. Here she comes. Well, it's great run from Tori Hansen just to find the back of the net with that. 10 minutes left to go in the first half, and then it would be a Meza ball in behind that would influence that play. And then just moments ago, a great positioning find Isabel Cox. Doesn't matter if she meant it or not, she won't mind one bit. And that would put North Carolina up 3-0. She was either trying to get that perfect flick or she was trying to get her get foot out of, out of the way. way. Yeah, I think she was trying to get out of the way, but well done from a striker. Just putting yourself in a great position no matter what. She'll get credit for the goal. That she will. And North Carolina looks like 
they are going to get credit for this win on the road and prove their record to 6-1-0 and unless Duke has some late game magic in them here with under four minutes to play. Both teams have made a few more substitutions as you've probably seen them coming in and out here in these last few minutes. Oh, I've got some oohs and ahs from the Carolina crowd over there. Murphy. Julia Burnell, a late sub here, senior for the Blue Devils coming into the match. Makes her fourth appearance of the season, replaces Delaney Graham, who rarely comes off the field, but will get a rest and exit a couple minutes earlier than usual. Emmy Allen, so far so good, and keeping that zero goals against in net for the Tar Heels. She came into the match, one of six players nationally, goalkeepers, who had gone at least 270 minutes without allowing a goal. Can add 90 more to that total. Scoreless so far. That is Cooper coming off, her night done. Never quite did get that Cooper moment of magic, and I think you give a ton of credit to North Carolina for that. Cox picking up her first goal of the season in the 84th minute. And North Carolina content to play keep away for the final minute and a half. Particularly that if you're Duke, let's start with the Blue Devils, that, that you take out of this one? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, for long periods of this game, outside of giving up the goal in the first half, which is, you know, you could say that is a mistake on their part, conceding, you know, fairly even game in the first 45, and then obviously going to have to open themselves up defensively to try to chase the game that allows for a North Carolina that's always going to press in numbers forward opportunities in behind and we saw that throughout this game so I think for long moments of this game they've kept it pretty tight it's just now about how can you affect the game get more numbers going forward against a team that is going to send a lot of players forward and, and cause some problems defensively for you. And then for North Carolina Jen Great response after that UCLA loss on Sunday. And they had to be incredibly proud of this performance away from home, commanding lead, especially in the second 45 to go up 3-0. Just complete control, you could say, in the, the last half of this game. 